two drone power concepts and my second attempt at explaining to you what's going on here until my camera overheats and dies again. Um, I mean, hey, I love GoPro, but, you know, five minutes and it overheats. Granted, it's about 85, 90 degrees in here. Um, but, you know, hey, they're good cameras if you're ever, you know, frequenting the Arctic Circle. Uh, they work great. Um, can't complain about it, really. So, anyway, what am I going to do? Anyway, we were explaining before that this was uh, basically... The entire drone is going to be assembled pretty soon. The body and all that other stuff. I'm working on a second engine. We do have one engine done already. I have two more to go after this. And then we will be ready to kind of put everything together. I've got to get some carbon fiber rods in where I plan on attaching the engines to these points here and to here. There'll be epoxied into place with uh, 20 millimeter carbon fiber rods. They are um, four millimeter thick uh, wall thickness, so they are pretty rigid. But then I'm gonna put a, a uh, fiberglass wrap around that to make certain that uh, everything is sealed plus the epoxy on the inside around the carbon fiber. And then I'm going to sort of run some, paint some epoxy on here to kind of strengthen up that area. Most of the weight of the, the drone is in the engine. Granted, we are going to have three of these batteries for the initial test run on that platform and a battery tray. And then the bus bars that I explained later on. Um, on the half of the video that I got after this thing shut down. <laughs> but uh, basically the, the whole system is going to be uh, batteries, uh, bus bar platform, ES, uh, sorry, ESCs off of the corners here. They'll go off of uh, each side here to the outer wall here. The ESC will sit right there. It's already been designed, ready to be printed. And then everything will connect towards the center bus bars at the top. Again, like I said, I explained that in a little bit later on. And then uh, everything's controlled through the Speedy Flight Controller F405 wing for the um, Mad Components ESCs that I'm getting, which are the 120 amp 18S, because we are doing 75 volts. These motors are 75 volts. And that's what we're going for. I've been testing at 48 volts, which is uh, which is impressive in itself. So having 75 is going to give me that peak RPM I'm looking for on a 110 kV motor. So basically where we're at is cutting the heat sinks, printing the fan, finish the body, get the carbon fiber here so I can do some more work, and fitting everything together. Getting the light system, Arduino will go here, battery pack will go here. Um, I may have explained that in another part of the video. I'm confused at this point because it overheated, shut down, and now I have to splice everything back together. Um, so the next video you see, the less longer run video that you see, will be an engine mounted to a wall section or of the body, carbon fiber tubes, the ESC, uh, run through here, the motors, the wiring for the lighting, everything. So you'll have one full section. So this will literally be hanging off here with all of its components necessary to function. And then of course everything connects here. Each section connects with a carbon fiber rod and then all this around the edges gets epoxied, of course, so that nothing moves. And then you have your center platform which will go right in this area and that's that platform over there. And the one above it, which will hold the control systems. So, that's where we are right now. As you can see, we're getting things cut out. Every time I break a bit on this thing, because they're just Amazon bits. I just started off at the home position, put a new bit in like I did yesterday. So we're ready to go to finish cutting this heat sink. And we got one more to cut out for here. And then I did, I do explain later on in the video that uh about the peltier uh cooling system that i want to input into this we're working on fan two working on the body we're going to get the body done as close to done as possible because we want these sections on the fan and then we want to kind of push everything together uh, you know as one piece 
and get those center platforms aligned properly and then get everything epoxied into place so that it's one solid body part and ready to go for a maiden so again two more motors to go after this one testing of all of them <laughs> putting the body together putting the electronics together running the escs the lights the wires the whole nine yards and then we'll be ready to go so um yeah and now at this point i'm going to end up going back into where i stopped here explaining the peltier circuit system so here we go. Okay, sorry about that. The camera died. Um, what I was saying was these Peltier circuits that I'm going to put on these fins are basically going to be wired up to either the main system or a separate battery system. And they'll have an aluminum cooling fin on top of it. So it'll be uh, this aluminum cooling fin, which attaches to the motor. It'll be the Peltier circuit, which is strapped over the top, and then a heat sink which is also attached to the top of that. So the wind flow cools off the warm side of the Peltier circuit once you apply current. This significantly, sig <laughs> this significantly drops <laughs> the current, the, the, not the current, but the <laughs> temperature of this metal down to a refrigerated temperature, which means that it will not only pull a lot of heat from the motor, but it will constantly super cool it. Now this is obviously a future adaptation, so we wanna make sure that um, you know we have all the specs for it. So these fins will probably be designed a little bit differently so that they can pull more of that cold, cold side of the Peltier into it and refrigerate this entire section. Um, then we'll, of course we'll have the aluminum heat sinks on top of the Peltiers on the hot side for the fan to cool down. So, basically refrigerated cooling uh, using Peltier circuit technology. So that's kind of where we're at in this. Um, after this is all done, after the engine is done, this particular one, I want to get the body started. I want to get it kind of all in one piece before I go on to engine three, engine four, because I need to see how things are going to fit. And if everything is good to go got to get those carbon fiber rods here we are talking about a roughly 10,000 millimeters of 20 millimeter carbon fiber rod with a four millimeter wall thickness so it's going to be pretty rigid and it, i kind of want it to be because these are going to put out a significant amount of thrust at 9,000 rpms so i'm not going to say that being said <laughs> that's where we're at right now and as things progress you will see more i will show you more uh, you'll see things like the engine glowing then you'll see like me running the test fan and testing each engine with the new lighting and making sure everything's going well. And then you'll get to see the entire drone put together. One whole piece sitting on this table and me trying to figure out how I'm going to transport it on the top of my car all the way to the flight field after authorization comes through from the FAA. <laughs> so, again, we're making progress. We've got a number. This is registered as a UAS, UAV. Um, it does exist within the FAA database. It is called the Shrike. It is version 0001. <laughs> I had to put a couple of zeros in front of there. Because I figure I'm going to be making a lot more, right? So, as things progress and we move from just printing to carbon fiber to CNCing and metal, this is going to be a very long adventure. And I think in the end, we're going to have a very special drone that is capable of many, many things and hopefully, hopefully is suitable 
for search and rescue operations for SAR ops. I really want this to be used in SAR ops because it's capable of many things, especially the end version of this entire drone, which has gimbling engines. It's going to be able to do things that traditional drones can't, get places where traditional drones can't, and lift a lot more than even the agricultural drones. And I sincerely hope that that helps in the future. I hope that in disaster situations where people are stranded, where they need supplies, where they need rescue, that we could actually design something that can get there, get back, and help get images, map ground conditions, so on and so forth. Doesn't matter what this crisis is, I want this to be able to work in any one of those environments. So, as we continue, I hope you follow along. If you like the video, like and subscribe. Become a member. I do lives occasionally. When I'm printing, I'm usually streaming a game that I'm particularly horrible at, which is most of them, but it's quite entertaining. So that, <laughs> I almost said the end. That not being said, <laughs> I hope you will all join up, subscribe, share it with your friends. I hope you like what you see with the content that I've already put out. Go check it out and then be prepared for the next live. It might be a game. It might be the, me testing another fan. Um, you never know. So that's how it works in here. I, I, I build with the resources I have until I have to stop to go on to a different project to utilize the resources I have for those. And then when I get more resources for this, I come back to this project and I start working on that. Like this is one of the drones I want to put together for the GoPro. So I have some aerial footage of this thing when it's in the air. <laughs> so um, or I may just mount it right on the drone. Who knows? Either way, it's going to be fun. So again, thank you for watching. Hope you all enjoyed what you saw here and the progress that we're making so far with the Shrike Ultra 340 millimeter EDF drone. And I hope you all stick around and get a chance to see this thing finished because it's going to be epic. And I'm glad you could go along with me on the journey. Now it's a hundred degrees in here. I'm going back inside. Thank you all.